So can pirates attack your cruise ship? A question I asked myself while sailing on the Ruby Princess way back in the day when I was a kid. You see, I was staring into the dark ocean while standing on the top deck and I saw a light in the distance. My vivid imagination automatically thought of that melody and that infamous cruise ship pirate attack. So they hit us with um, um, rocket, rocket grenades, RPGs. And, um, and the, they, there was a woman in her cabin and she was fortunately in, in her bathroom. But a rocket grenade went right through and blew the whole cabin out. Today's pirates evoke the same fears as they did back in the day. They may not look the same, but they mean business and strike often. Far more often than most realize. It wasn't until the early 2000s that we learned they can strike cruise ships as well. The morning of the November the 5th, I woke around 6 o'clock. I went over, put the shade up, and saw this boat with these five guys in it with guns. I saw him waving his AK-47 over his head, and you kept hearing the ping of bullets on the hull of the ship. For almost two hours, the cruise ship Seaborne Spirit desperately tries to escape a violent attack by Somali pirates. Most of these attacks are in the Gulf of Aden, but they can happen almost anywhere at any time, including Asia, the Somali coast, and the Amazon River. But you may be surprised to know that cruise lines are actually prepared and ships are well equipped to handle situations when pirates attack. Modern piracy is a multi-million dollar business, highly organized enterprise that relies on investors to pull off these high-risk operations. I am not kidding you. There are estimated 72 pirate groups or quote-unquote maritime companies in Somalia alone, according to a study published in January of 2019. So investors pay in money or equipment like guns and etc. in hopes of big returns. If a hijacking is successful, the bulk of the money actually goes to these investors and not the foot soldiers that are in the speedboats. They get pennies in comparison. Pirates often working in packs of speedboats take two-prong approaches to this. Some of them will work to slow the target ship down by running zigzags in front of the vessel, while the rest approach from the sides to try to board it. If the pirates capture the vessel, they will take it back, close to the Somalia coast or whatever, and then they will start the negotiations, which can last for months. This is a high reward, but also a very high risk operation because success rate is actually very small. The result of the 230 recorded attacks since 2005 are 42 attempts failed to capture the vessel where the pirates just gave up and left. 16 attacks were repelled by the crew or the passengers. 84 attacks were released after capture with no ransom paid. 27 attacks come under the unknown heading where the pirates didn't get anything and the ships got away but we don't know how and then 40 have resulted in the pirate payday. So that's a 17.4% success rate. Now cruise ships in general have a very low risk of a pirate hijacking. Cargo ships are primary targets for the pirates given the valuable load and minimal crew. Only six of the 230 recorded attacks were against cruise ships. None have resulted in capture. A well-known incident occurred in 2005 when the Seaborne Spirit was fired at in a hijacking attempt. The attempt was unsuccessful, but it's famous largely because of the footage of that event. Ladies and gentlemen, 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 all ships stay inside, stay inside, stay inside. We are trying to stay try run away from them now. Stay inside, everybody. This is a, a real alarm. Please stay inside. And when he said this is not a drill, I thought, oh boy, we're going to have to abandon ship. It's on fire. Can you tell us? But we had a wonderful captain, and he knew exactly he what to do. Yeah. He, he, he got us out of harm's way. Yeah. How, how, how did you feel when it happened to the Somalis? Very scary. 
In April 2009, MSC Cruises, former MSC Melody, experienced perhaps the most infamous cruise ship pirate attack. Following a late night outdoor classic musical concert, several passengers spotted a light heading towards the ship and notified crew members. Cruisers then began hurling deck chairs overboard to keep the pirates from climbing the side of the vessel. And then the pirates opened fire. No one was seriously injured, and eventually, thanks to the evasive maneuvers by the captain and the trained Israeli security officers who were stationed on boards, the pirates gave up. But not before a strange call was placed to the bridge in broken English requesting Melody's coordinates. Now, cruise ships can protect themselves against pirates using a range of tactics that broadly fit into defensive and offensive strategies. Defensive strategies generally entail minimizing the opportunity for the pirates to successfully capture the ship. These include camouflage through blackout conditions, deck closures, and low noise emissions. In the event of capture, passengers are corralled into a lockdown in a theater and restaurants to keep them away from the direct pirate contact. They actually even have pirate drills for this. We will be operating at a higher level of security alertness. Queen Mary 2 will be routed through an internationally recommended transit corridor and will be under the protection of an international task force assigned by United Nations mandate to protect merchant ships from a piracy threat. We have also embarked a United Kingdom Royal Navy liaison officer on board who will assist us during the transit and is in contact with coalition naval assistance if required. A sliding scale of offensive strategies that escalate depending on the severity of the situation are available. At the least severe end of the spectrum, the captain will engage the zigzag maneuver and or speed up the ship to try to outrun the pirates. Next is the high pressure hose used to dislodge the would-be attackers from climbing their ladders. These are set up and ready for action before entering the Gulf of Aden. If that doesn't work, a long-range acoustic device called LRAD is used. This device, utilized by the naval troops, sends out sonic waves of powerful energy that can cause permanent hearing damage from a distance of 300 meters. This is a test of a long-range acoustic device LRAD. Talk to a small boat, let them know that you see them, let them know that they have lost the element of surprise. More dramatically, cruise ships actually carry two snipers on board. I am not kidding you. The night of the reported hijacking attempt, a sniper was seen on the top deck in full black ninja gear carrying a large gun. He scuffled out of sight when he realized that the passengers could see him. There are also a number of everyday crew that specializes in combat training that is on board your ship although you'll never know who they are until they have to kick into the Jackie Chan mode. Some support is available for ship operators cruising through the troubled waterways. The United States, France, Germany, the UK and other countries have beefed up security for cruise ships as well as cargo ships around these areas. They often work together to keep ships safe. It's more common now to see ships cruising throughout the Gulf of Aden, for instance, in a convoy of other vessels with protection at both ends. There is safety in numbers. Navies from various nations as well as NATO and the European Union have all shared in this patrolling duty. So next time you're staring into the dark ocean and see a light in the distance, remember, under the black flag they sail, and the sea shall be their empire. Ahoy matey, see you in the next video.